Good morning. We got a little bit of a heat spell going on. We're looking at what are we looking at? Six degrees out there. Uh, inside is still below 32. Uh, right around the stove here, it's, it's warming up to 35 because I'm pricking the coffee and cooking some breakfast. I ran the propane heater on mid to low last night and it dried my pants somewhat, but I still got ice on on the pants there. And yeah, I guess I get a lot of ice still on the pants. So, I don't know. Doesn't throw off a ton of heat unless I'm doing something wrong. Plus, you need a damper. I don't know. But it's dry heat, at least. Everything's dry in here. Uh, there's no propane buildup on the ceiling or, or uh, moisture on the ceiling or the walls, which is nice. It's plenty warm enough for me, or I'd turn it up at night to a hotter temperature. But I'm going to do some crappy fishing today. I'm uh, going to do a little traveling, looking around some different bodies of water with my good buddy CJ from Burnt Meadow Guide Service and see what we can get into. First things first, though, I'm going to drive this breakfast into me and this coffee once it heats up. I'm drinking yesterday's coffee right here. It's still warm out of that Stanley Thermos, believe it or not. Not hot, but it's warm. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Apparently. What's up, guys? We are out here crappy fishing. We're fishing for big flats today. Nothing under 15 inches. I'm in this fish donkey tournament, and this week I have you bringing your three biggest, mouth closed, pushed up against the board, legit, legit weighed in. Uh, I have a 15. A 15 and a quarter and a 15 and three quarter, I think. 
yeah that sounds about right for 46 inches and i'm in the lead over my good buddy sean and uh and i think 330 maniacs in there somewhere too so it's fun to compete online against these guys that live in minnesota and wisconsin you know and and places that are typically known for having big crappy and big flats but I'm having a blast here. I'm fishing with my good buddy CJ from Burnt Meadow Guide Service. We're running around a little bit. You know, we yesterday we just wanted to cross some eyeballs and straighten some lines and bend some poles. So we went to a place that doesn't have any big ones and just had a blast. We caught 100 each probably in the 10 to 12 inch range. You know, what we call eaters here. Normally we'd, we'd move if we were on those. It was fun. You know, it's a lot of fun and you build your confidence up and you build your technique up and you, you start to trust your gear even more. So we did that yesterday and he cut up a bunch last night and we're gonna bring some home for Donnie and save a little bit for later in the year. And today we're just going for bigs, you know, nothing under 15 inches and we're gonna sharpshoot them. Uh, might work together, might work separately. We got a couple different units, a couple different drills and, and uh, see if we can catch some giant fish. Stay tuned, guys. Weather conditions for today. This is the first day it's been, you know, above zero in the morning. So it was like 31 degrees this morning. It's probably ch chilled down just a little bit. Maybe we're in the upper 20s, but the wind's blowing today, you know, so we got like a, it's calling for five to 10. We saw as much as 15 out of the north, northwest. So that'll cool things back down. But in the meantime, we got really good cloud cover. Uh, a little bit of a low pressure and the bite should be on a lot better than it has been all week so stay tuned maybe we'll cross somebody's eyeballs and hold a big one up on the camera for you all right guys we just got here sharp shot didn't even have time to get the gopro set up and i popped i popped these two sharp shooting with cj um super quick flopped one on the ice and dropped down and got them both just want to show you these two right in the 15 15 inch range and then we're going to put those back so we can catch them more and catch them when they're bigger. So here we go. Let that one go. And then this one, I gotta get a measurement for fish donkey because he might go the full 15. Oh yeah, beauty, nice. All right, another 15 incher going back. There he goes, sweet. Got him, finally. Wow, he was way bigger than I was expecting. Nice. 15? Yeah. Dude, he wasn't even good. He's He was more than a lot of things. All right, 15 and a half going back. Oh, dude, finally. That. I watched it. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. That was a struggle. The only reason I stopped watching is I had one come underneath my hole. Got one. Things are getting real over here. The bait's coming into my bait. Yeah, I do. Good ones.
I just watched a crappie eat like three of those. That was crazy. He just ate like three of those things. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Not good for me, but... Man, this footage is unreal. That bigger one is just destroying that school. Oh. Alright guys, got a pretty good slab right there, nice slab right there, that one's got a mark on the side, on this side, got hit there pretty good by something, but nice slab, we'll get him measured in the back. The bite had slowed down a little bit. We're fishing pretty open basin crappie that are keying in on pods of bait, most likely L wives or small baby crappie or perch. And CJ spotted this decent one at 80 feet away on the live scope. So we drilled, we moved over to it, and now you can see us. He's dropping his bait down on the top left of the screen. A lot of air bubbles on it. You know, your first drop, usually your line and your your bait has a lot of air on it so you'll see some air bubbles coming off of it but that's the fish dead center of the screen really nice crappies hovered over about 11 foot out over um around 20 22 foot of water i think and cj's just starting to get his attention now he's about eight to ten foot away from his bait as you can see he turned and the cool thing about live scope is once i turn it a little bit for you guys to lock in see the reason he's going away on the screen is because he's circling the bait but i just moved the live scope to point it towards him again and then now you can see his tail you can see the hump the heck on it and you can see its fins and everything it's pretty pretty cool when you get that thing dialed in like this the gain's a little high obviously as you can see all the um the interference on the screen but it's slowly coming in and it's still circling and now it's kind of like straight on a mission. And you can see the outline of that crappie. It's a good fish. CJ, got him. All right, you guys might have just seen that fish on the live scope. CJ saw it from over 80 feet away and we came over and he popped it pretty good. Good release. See you later, big fella. We don't have any 15 and a half. Yeah. So after that fish catch, we get back on the live scope and look around to see if there's any more solos swimming around. And we spot this really nice one at 82 feet away. So we're going to key in on it a little bit, make sure it's one we want to go after. You can definitely see it's a good tall one. And we're going to make the move and head over and try to get on this fish. This is how we use forward-facing sonar to find either schools or solo fish in basins or open water. You can also use it for structure as well. All right, we just spied one at 80. I'm gonna give him a look. Oh, you had one that was going 60. There he is. It's 20. I'm laying down too far to it. That's pretty good fish. Yeah. So. Uh, hold on. He shot before he even got there. Ah. Uh, go 23. 
He just went to mud. I don't know what it is. Oh, hold on. He's 23 over here now. Yep. He's staying. Go, come five feet closer, six feet closer. Hold on, you might be just driving him in. This guy's spooked. Yeah, let's see what it is. I'm just gonna try him right here. He's 16 away, but drill him out on, see what happens. Yeah. That nailed him. He hasn't moved yet. Maybe I ought to come over. Oh, he's coming the way around. Now he's still 15. He's right there. Yeah, I'll just drop this. Down. Looks like a nice fish. I think it is. Might be one we already caught. Tell you one thing, this treble hook's causing a problem when you gotta get to in a hurry. Coming in. If you get his attention, you will get him. I've been noticing the last couple days. But it looks like they're diving in the mud. They're just going around. Right. This thing just picks it Dropped up. Out. Yeah. 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 So they're not actually di diving down. If you stay on them. I think your best chance is to work him right from here. Mm -hmm. He's coming. fish. Think so? Pretty bad when I was catching 14s and I felt like I was robbing and now we're catching 15 and a half and we're like wouldn't done us any good. Yeah. <laughs> no that's wouldn't like. Wouldn't done you any good. No I, I don't know what my smallest is right now. Is it 15 or 15 and a quarter or is it What is my smallest? It's going to be 15. Oh, it's, it's over 15. Yeah, it's, it's either 15 or 15. You're going to get this fish. Here he comes. I like how yours came in. So we're gonna drop something smaller. I put it in the face when I put it. You can spook some and make some bite. You know it's facing away, right? Yeah. Can you turn that a little? I didn't want to move my knees because it's been spooking. Swinging. You got them on the back side of the transducer. Go full. There we go.
dot right there. If you zoom that in one click, it's probably... There you go, yeah. Yeah. Stopped, huh? Yeah, I went 16 because I thought he was getting to the 15. I need him to rush me. Oh, did he just rush? Oh, no, I know. <laughs> I thought he freaking lurched. Was he? Was he playing? No, he's moving. Oh, he is now. So he's not near me? No. Yeah, this fish just wasn't having it. That's why they call it fishing. You could use the live scope to find them and find where they live, but it doesn't mean you can catch them. But as you'll see, I messed with this fish a little bit more. He kind of showed some interest. We threw a couple different baits at him. You know, we're just artificial lures, and he didn't have it. So we ended up just uh, messing with him for a little while and and left him alone after that. And we're planning on coming back because it was definitely worth it size-wise. That's a, that's a really big fish. He's over 15 easy. And as you could see, he kind of just kept circling and moving around. This is in high speed. And eventually, he's just going to go down into the mud and think it over. But we forgot to come back to him, so we'll get him next time. <laughs> Ha, the bass. Full of bass. That's funny. Full of bass right there. Good one? Crappy? Nice. All right, all right, made it back. Absolutely great day, pan fishing. Um, we had several fish over 15 inches today, over 14 and a half, it's just big, big crappy. And uh, they grow pretty stout, pretty mean here in Maine. Had a blast doing it. Um, sticking to some game plans and just following through with CJ is always a lot of fun, so always fun fishing with CJ. He goes hard at it. Weather right now, we're looking at 21 degrees outside and inside's too cold to register, so probably 21 inside. Just turn the heater on, as you can see. Uh, I'm not sold on the thing yet. I gotta figure it out if I'm missing something to get more heat out of it or, or I don't know, because uh, seems like it's eating a lot of propane and it hasn't really been keeping this place that warm. So I could be doing something wrong. I don't know. I got it on high right now, but I don't know how long you could run the thing on high with just a 20 pound tank. 
maybe one a night. I don't know. So I figure that out. Um, looks like I'm going to have to cut the trip short a couple more days. I mean, I've been out here five, six, seven. I don't even know how many days now. Let's see. I got here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I think I've been here seven or eight days. <laughs> um, but it's supposed to rain. We're supposed to get a little mixed precipitation tonight, which I'm not too worried about. It's going to be like an inch or less of snow. But then tomorrow afternoon and night, it's supposed to rain. Thursday, it's supposed to rain and warm up. So I don't want to be out here when it's raining. These things aren't really built for rain. And, you know, ice fishing isn't really made for rain either. And none of your stuff is. And it's tough to dry out once you get wet. So probably going to call it a trip tomorrow. Uh, going to fish in the morning, do like a midday, and then come back and pack up and head her home and start to do some editing for you guys so that's the story thanks for tuning in guys uh check out breakfast tomorrow morning good morning good morning this looks like it's gonna be the last morning here we got some rain coming this afternoon wicked bummer wicked bummer so that's gonna do it for this trip this will be the last morning last breakfast on the ice for right now so I got some cleaning up to do. Gonna fish probably half a day with my buddy CJ. And then after that, I gotta come break up camp and get it off the ice before the rain comes. And hopefully get on the road before the freezing rain happens. Cause that's no fun to drive in that. So speaking about driving, I uh, got some breakfast started. Gonna drive that into me pretty soon here. Uh, what do we got going on? This piece of toast, sausage, and, and the hash brown in there. And coffee is started. It's not perking yet, but I get a little bit of yesterday's coffee always stays warm. You know, if I leave a cup in there, it uh, stays warm enough in the morning to have while I'm waiting for this to, to cook and be ready. We got 21 degrees out there this morning. Uh, Ran the heater on low all night, and it was like 41 in here. It was like mid to low temperature. And then this morning, for fun, I decided since I'm leaving anyway, I'm going to crank it and see what it does. So, you know, when you crank that heater, it can heat this place up pretty quick. I got 56 degrees over here now. Uh, cooking, obviously, brings some more heat in here. But I think, I think the heater can do the job. It's just gonna use a lot of propane, is what I think. So we'll see. I gotta, I gotta give it a little bit more test before I give you guys a good honest review. You know, just one trip, and and I had some serious cold temperatures, but I ran it awful low, so there's no no telling. But I did go through two cans of propane already, so you know, running it not aggressively. I think it'll go about two days or two nights, you know, two to three days and two nights on a 20 pounder, I think, but I got to give it a little bit better test.
pretty good breakfast right there, folks. Pretty good breakfast. We, um, I think this is the seventh day I've been out on the ice in a row on this trip, but I'm not 100% sure. I gotta count back the days and try to figure out what day I got here. So I think I got here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, today's Wednesday. So that makes eight days and and uh it'll make seven nights and eight days so pretty good trip um as far as trips go uh awesome fishing incredible fishing i didn't film as much fishing as i normally do just because the fishing was a grind it was super tough you were getting we're picking up one fish here and there and we're seeing a lot on the live scope and we were chasing them down the way that cj and i like to chase them down um, as a team or even individually so it's really hard to film in those conditions and it's super hard to film when it's below zero so we had a lot of conditions where it was you know 10 to 13 below zero and a little bit of wind in that and then you go to turn on the cameras and the the cameras freeze up or the battery's frozen or the gopros just die so i didn't get as much footage but i did fish my first ever fish donkey tournament uh, it was, it's an app where you can fish against people from all across the country. So it's really cool because I get to fish against my friends in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Um, 3.30 Maniac has been fishing it. He's got a great YouTube channel. If you haven't seen that, check it out. He does a lot of pan fishing, uh, a lot of trapping, Minnesota, Wisconsin, um, that region of the, the country. And then Sean Reisgrief, Reis, Reisgrief, am I saying that right? um just a amazing amazing fisherman he's a he's an absolute hammer in minnesota i got to fish with him one day and could tell just from that day that that he's a he's a stick so fishing against him isn't easy he's breathing down my neck on this one i'm in the lead for this week that goes till sunday um with the rain coming i probably won't be able to fish anymore so i think i have like 45 inches for my best three crappy, maybe a little bit more. Maybe it might be 46 inches for this week. Last week I had a 16 and a quarter, a 15 and change, and then like a 12 and three quarter. But right when I took the picture on the 12 and three quarter, it popped its tail up a little bit. So I got a, a um, penalty for that. And it had just so happened to be a three quarter inch penalty which moved me to a tie for first so i tied 330 maniac on that one that was a bummer it was a, but i only had like two days to fish so i feel like he kind of got away with that one for the tie and then there's also an overall for your best three combined from all the weeks so i'm gonna be up probably i'm over 46 inches for that I think I'm at 47 inches top three because I got a 16 and a quarter, 15 and a half, and then I think like a 15 and a quarter. So that would make 47 inches, I guess. Yeah, 47 inches top three. I think I'll just take a couple trips, you know, I'll come back and get the floor, I'll come back and get the tent. Right. Uh, 
Yeah, your cover for this is up to the house. What's that, bud? Your cover for this is up to the house. Oh, so was that my cover we saw all week? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was your cover. No. Because I was like, I didn't know if I brought a cover or not. Well, that's cool. There's three packages. I was being a little selfish. Did you, you check them out? up here and open it. I don't want to see them. I, I wouldn't care if you look through it. No, I would never open your mail. I wouldn't even go in the hand pocket. I would never fucking do that. I don't know why, but that was something we were taught young. Is you never go with a woman first. Yeah, not just me then. Freaking thing of wood yeah, and tin foil. Cool. So, what do I need to build like a metal box or something? I think it's like, like that thing you make your window or something like that. Would be nice to yeah, so like get it up a little bit, like an inch or air, air space underneath. Huh. Guys, when you're out ice fishing, whether it's a day or a week, and you set up your tent and you eat and you fish and you have a great time. Just pick up after yourself. It's the easiest friggin' thing in the world. I don't need to be telling that to grown men and women, but I just like to say it because it drives me nuts. Because the other day we were on a lake and we could see where two tents had a good time and we picked up beer cans and tops to propane canisters and a bunch of stuff on the ice that just doesn't belong there. Let's keep it clean for everybody else. I don't mind saying that, but. That's it, that's a load. So two loads for this trip. I could have done it all in one, but I decided to do it in two because it's a short run and it's easier. And now I'm just gonna drive this puppy right on the trailer, not even unhook, not even unload, and it'll be ready for the next trip. One heck of a trip. Heading over to CJ's, pick up a few things, and then off to the editing room for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> 